Hey guys, welcome to DRC Garage. I've had some private messages and some uh, some emails inquiring um, my professional baseball career. I think I had mentioned that uh, in the um, A Arcuda video. Um, and someone had a few people, maybe four or five people, were wanting to know a little bit about my baseball career. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this one-time video and kind of explain how how my career went and stuff like that. But this 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 uh this channel is based on drag racing car collections um cystic fibrosis um other illnesses i could because i do put on a big charity drag race in florida i'm in my i'll be heading in my eighth year it's called drag race for a cure and we donate um all the uh proceeds to to charity so anyways so i i used to bmx race from when i was like five to eight years old and then my uncle got me into uh, Little League Baseball. I played Little League Baseball from the time I was at nine, 9 to 12. And then I played Babe Ruth down here in Florida. They call it Babe Ruth. I played Babe Ruth from the time I was 13 to um, 18. Um, my junior year in high school, I started getting um, like questionnaires from colleges and questionnaires from uh, a few pro teams. I know Detroit Tigers, Chicago White Sox, San Francisco Giants, Atlanta Braves, and maybe the, the Red Sox or the Twins. I think it was the Twins. I was a right-handed pitcher. Um, my first, my senior year, I started to get more. I never really got any major, like, big time power powerhouse college uh questionnaires it was mostly like division two a couple division one but they weren't real powerhouses like florida florida state um one thing i always wanted to play professional baseball um it was like my childhood dream and my father we like i said in the in the other video that's how people ask me about playing professional baseball um my other video with the A Arcuda. So my dad was working on the A Arcuda and all I was worried about was getting out on the, the baseball field. I literally practiced baseball from the time I got out of school till the time it got dark, year round. Other kids were playing basketball or football, whatever was in the season. But uh, I, my my mission and my my dream, like I said, was to play professional baseball. I got some questionnaires. I started getting some questionnaires back in like in my junior year from colleges and stuff like that. But um, mostly my senior year. Um, my senior year, I was six foot four, 170 pounds, um, and I threw like 85, 86. I was tall. I had a lot of room to grow. So. Um, I had a couple, like maybe like seven or eight teams that were real interested in me. I didn't even want to go to college. Like I, I literally, if I was going to college, I was going to play baseball. So 1990, um, the draft came. Um, I was drafted by the Pittsburgh Pirates. Um, their spring training facility is like literally one town north of where I was presently living in Sarasota. Um, I spent two and a half years um, with the Braves. My first pitching coach was Bruce Keeson. He was a uh, part of the 71-79 World Series champion Pittsburgh Pirates. The the Pirates were really good to me. I, I really I, I grew a lot. Like I put on my first off season, all I did was work out, um, play long toss. My average um, fastball went from like an 85 to like 91, 92, just within one year, and that was. I ne had never been on a weight uh, a weight program as far as lifting weights and conditioning and stuff like that. And things have changed a lot since I played, but um, I, got, I got released um, at the end of May of 1992. Um, I played my first year I played in the Gulf Coast League. My second year I was in the Gulf Coast League. Just because I was a, a, a high school, a guy out of high school, I never had any other um, you know, college experience. I signed right out of high school. So I was, uh, I was headed to short season, um, A-ball in Welland, Canada with the, the Pirates. 
and it was literally like two days before the draft. Um, they we all went out to stretch, and they called me in the in the uh, the locker room and took me in the office, and they gave me my release. You know, here I was a tw what, 21, 22 year old kid, and had this dream just wiped away from me. But I had a a, a pitching coach when I was the spring training before. Um, he knew he was leaving to go to the, the Pittsburgh, or he went from the Pittsburgh Pirates to the Atlanta Braves. So I went, his name was Jerry Nyman. Chuck Lamar was the guy who signed me with Pittsburgh, and he was the minor league coordinator with the Braves. So it's kind of about who you know. So I called them to see if they had any any openings, and it might have been like a couple weeks went by, and I hadn't heard anything. But he told me on the phone just that if anything – comes up and you want to go to go to a tryout or whatever if another team picks you up don't wait on us so um the colorado rockies called it was like their expansion year and they had me come down from from sarasota to miami it was about a i don't know four hour drive something like that and they said it's an open tryout well i didn't really think so i get down there and there's like 350 people and I think there was like four or five people that played, had previous pro ball experience. There was like three or four people that could not even, they didn't know which glove the hand went on. So I was pretty aggravated and pissed off about that. But anyways, I did the tryout. I, I was driving home. It was my girlfriend at the time's graduation. She was still in high school. And um, she was legal, she was 18. So uh, I, I totally missed the graduation. Um, I was running late from, because they, they kept me behind, they kept like seven people out of the 350 and I was one of them. Um, they told us that they were gonna be choosing two or three um, from that tryout with the Rockies down at Nova University in Miami. And uh, so, I missed her graduation. I felt bad. She lived. She lived in the neighborhood, and we went by the house, and and uh, I told her that I'd be back. I was still in my my baseball cleat, uh, not my cleats, but my baseball pants and belt and shirt, and I was filthy dirty. It was raining, so I went to um, I went home to take a shower, and then I told her I'd be back. So I went back to my parents. Still living with my parents, and. Uh, here I'm losing train of thought so I, I went back to my parents and I checked the messages and it was Jerry Nyman from the Atlanta Braves and so I called him and he said that I will be leaving um, this was on like a Saturday night I think it was Monday morning or Tuesday morning I would be leaving Tampa International Airport and headed to Idaho to play for the Braves so I went back to the party and I said, I got good news and I got bad news. And they go, what's the good news? And I said, the good news is I'm here. The bad news is I'm leaving in two days. So fast forward, I had a pretty good season in, um, in uh, Idaho. I was played in the Pioneer League. And then uh, that off season, um, after your third year of professional baseball, if you're not on the 40 man roster, another team can draft you. And it's called a rule five draft. It takes place in December. I think it's like the first week of December. So uh, I got um, rule five to the Milwaukee Brewers organization. This was the end of 90, was that, yeah, the end of 92. Cause I split, I went from April to like May with the Pirates. And then from June to September, I was with the, the Atlanta Braves. So I got Rule 5 to a AAA contract with um, to the Milwaukee Brewers. I went to spring training in 93 in Chandler, Arizona. And I uh, I ended up going, I was in the triple, with the AAA camp and towards the end of spring training, they kind of saved the big league guys' arms and stuff. So I went to, um, I pitched in a few games at the end of um, the, the spring training for the big league. I did okay. I didn't do great, but I didn't do I didn't do bad. I think I was like number 98. So the higher your number, the farther away you are. Um, I had a great season in was um, Beloit, Wisconsin. I was with the uh, Beloit Snappers. It was the minor league. It was about an hour south of Milwaukee. 
I had a really, really good season. I was a relief pitcher, um, but I had that was the best season I ever had. I think I had like 57 innings pitched or 54, and I had like 66 strikeouts and like 20 something walks. So I went from there, I went from the off season again, I got traded to the Texas Rangers organization for a big league pitcher named Jeff Bronke. Um, I went to big league camp um, in 94 with the um, Texas Rangers. Um, I got sent down within, I don't know, a couple weeks, three, three weeks maybe. Um, I played in uh, high A ball with them and then I played in Tulsa with the um, the double A team. I went back again the following year and I went to big league camp again in 94 or 95 and I, I was pretty much done like I was just so burnt out um, that I ended up getting released so I didn't try to go another place I was just you know I played what five or six years of professional baseball and I wanted to move on with my life and I wanted to have kids at a young age or a decent age my parents were both young but it was a great experience um i didn't watch baseball for like a year after after i got released um just because i was just i was so burnt out like i didn't know where i was going to be at the following year um but i did i did play with quite very very many um chipper jones was 1990 i was in the same draft as him Derek jeter no more garcia para I mean, the list goes on. Um, Javier Lopez, um, this Terrell Wade, Chris uh, Brock, this many, many professional guys that made it to the big leagues. I didn't get my, I had my shot. I didn't make it. Um, that's not, I mean, it was a good accomplishment that I've had. Um, I still have people to this day asking me, and I'm 51. I would have been done. If I had made it to big leagues, I'd be done now. But um, back, you know, I remember times where traveling on the, the buses, the long bus rides, people were playing cards and listening to music, and I was always looking at Hot Rod Magazine or Mopar Muscle. I've always had a passion for cars. So um, I did do some pitching lessons with... Uh, with people after I got back in the mood of getting back in the game of baseball. And back in 2019 or 2000, yeah, it was 2019, no, 2020. It was uh, this time last year, I, I got interviewed for the Pittsburgh Pirates and with for a pitching coach position here locally, just in the, the rookie ball level. No, it was 2019. Um, and COVID actually kind of messed it all up. Um, so what happened was, is the Major League, uh, Major League Baseball took the minor leagues. They had eight teams total. Every Major League team had eight minor league teams total and they, they cut it down to five. So I was kind of the new guy on the block as far as getting hired and they just let me go. And I, I understood, I wasn't upset or anything. But anyways, that's pretty much my baseball career in a nutshell. Um, if you guys have any more questions or anything like that, it was a great experience. Um, I could have went to Taiwan and played after I was done, but I, I, I made a promise to myself that uh, if I didn't, if I couldn't make it here, I'm not going nowhere else. I, I just, I made that commitment to myself. But um, I appreciate y'all watching the channel. Um, like I said, this channel will be based on mostly drag racing, car collections, fab shops. Um, it'll get start getting hot and heavy here in the next couple weeks. Um, I will be getting the, the shop cleaned up this weekend. It's not real bad, but I, I want it to look like a little little bit more organized. And I'm going to try to get my, my duster in here. Um, i got to get the Mustang back there out of here and kind of move some cars around. And I will be getting a lift um, probably in the springtime. So I'll have a little bit more room. Um, my garage, my shop is... 38 foot deep and like 26 feet wide so it's not real wide it's deep enough but it'll work it, it'll work for what i want and then we'll be doing um 
we'll be doing some content on the cars that I have. I don't want to get crazy with it. Um, like I said, I wanted this channel about the people that help me support charities. Um, but I, I appreciate you guys um, liking and sharing and, and, and subscribing. Appreciate I, I know there's a few more subscribers here recently. But uh, like I said, it'll start getting hot and heavy. We've got some good racing coming up in Bradenton. Um, I did go to uh, my my boss has a, has a, a G a, like a GXP. It looks like an old pro stock car. Actually, it's not old. It's like a 2018 or 17. But um, we were out at Bradenton. They had a big New Year's Nationals race, and I've never seen that many cars. It was 708 entries, 199 juniors, and we literally sat around. We, we were out there on Wednesday through Saturday. Yesterday we went out and um, cleaned up and brought the car home, but I'll be doing some content on his stuff. And we had uh, Jeff Sarah. He's a really, really good bracket racer from Pennsylvania. And we had Lyle Barnett driving the car. Um, I think we're going to do some like top sportsman with it and maybe some 4, 470 index with Lyle up in the Mooresville area, North Carolina. But uh, anyways, I appreciate you guys liking and sharing, subscribing. Um, I will have, um, like I said, it's all about cars, but it's not, it's not, I mean, 95% is going to be about cars and racing and all that stuff. But I, I do have a, a vlog schedule with my daughter. To tell, we're gonna to kind of tell our story of what it's like as a from a parent standpoint and from a, a patient standpoint to what it's like to live with cystic fibrosis. We'll kind of I'll have my daughter explain what CF is to you guys, um, and the you know we found out when in 1997 when she was a year old, and how CF has progressed and it's just amazing of what how far this disease has come but anyways guys i appreciate it um we'll be talking to y'all soon i'll probably maybe do like a little video this weekend just kind of show you a couple of the cars um i got the belvedere um if you want to see something about the aar um it is back there under the cover i did a, i did do a story on that and then we have a 79 trans am um and a 1970 um, TA challenge or four speed will be will be we'll introduce those but like the, the content for as far as on my end will be the duster and then once I get the duster going again I'm gonna put the CUDA start putting that back together but if you want to know more about that just go back and look at the story um, anyways guys stay safe I know there's some snow coming or it did come um, it's about maybe 70 degrees here right now it's beautiful but uh Hopefully you guys have a great evening and a happy new year. Um, thanks for thanks for liking and subscribing. I appreciate it. It's DRC Garage. See you guys later. Bye-bye.